Hello, this is Geology Basics video mini lecture number nine, tectonic plates and their relationships to other earth layers. The goals for this video tutorial are describe what a tectonic plate is made up of and explain how a tectonic plate differs from a continent. Explain how continental margins are different from continental, I can't say it, tectonic plate boundaries. Interpret a simple cross-section showing two tectonic plates and one boundary. Compare and contrast an active continental margin with a passive continental margin. For plate tectonics, mostly we're concerned about the uppermost earth layers, so both compositional and behavioral layers. So primarily the crust and the mantle, and also the lithosphere, the solid, brittle layer, and the asthenosphere, also solid but ductile. So we have a little bit of review here, and that is, can we figure out what layers um, of the ones that are listed on this diagram are behavioral and which are compositional? So here's our list. We've got asthenosphere, continental crust, lithosphere, mantle, and oceanic crust. So please take a minute or two, pause the video, and see if you can match up which ones are behavioral and which ones are compositional. The asthenosphere, it turns out it is a behavioral layer, and hopefully you recall that its behavior that characterizes it is it is ductile. That is, it bends or flows and stays in that new position when exposed to stress. Continental crust is compositional. Hopefully you recognize that it has a unique composition compared to the other compositional layers. How about lithosphere? Lithosphere is a behavioral layer. It's the solid rocky outer part of the earth that behaves in a brittle manner. How about the mantle? The mantle is also um, like the continental crust, a compositional layers. It's characterized by having a certain um, chemical composition. And oceanic crust is compositional too. One of the things that sometimes comes up is what is this, gr this light green layer? So we're saying it is mantle and it is lithosphere. So sort of two terms for it, or two ways to say this, it could be considered the lithospheric mantle or the mantle lithosphere, either one. Um, and it's not necessarily a behavioral or compositional layer, it's sort of a combination. But if you're looking for what that light green layer, its specific name, um, lithospheric mantle or mantle lithosphere would be the best names. Hopefully this is a good review and gets you thinking about the brittle layer of earth, the lithosphere, because that is what's gonna to relate to the tectonic plates next. Tectonic plates, as it turns out, are pieces of lithosphere. I think a lot of us at some point in our education might be thinking that tectonic plates are the crust, but it turns out they're not the crust, they're the sandwich layer, lithosphere. So the top of a tectonic plate um, whether it be continental crust at the top of the surface or oceanic crust, the top of the tectonic plate is the land surface. The bottom of the tectonic plate is going to be the bottom of the lithosphere. So the, basically the boundary in the mantle between what behaves in a brittle manner and what behaves in a ductile manner, that's going to mark that bottom of the tectonic plate. So it's this whole unit here that is the tectonic plate. Hopefully this image helps a little bit in thinking about that. The next question I have for you is how do the crust and the lithosphere relate to each other? So we've got six options here. Take a very careful read of these options. There is one single best answer. Make sure you read all the way to the end here, just in case maybe I hide it towards the end. I'm not giving you any clues here though. The best answer to the question, how do the crust and lithosphere relate to each other, is the crust is part of the lithosphere. The crust is a smaller unit that makes up the top of the lithosphere, and none of the other answers are really correct.
Another important aspect of understanding tectonic plates is they are segments of the lithosphere and they cover entire surface of Earth. Everywhere you go on Earth, you're standing on a tectonic plate. There's no gaps between tectonic plates. And the boundaries are the areas where two tectonic plates are interacting. And you already know some about how things are interacting. A question that's important in understanding um, about tectonic plates is, are tectonic plates made of oceanic crust, continental crust, or both? So let's be clear about how this is indicated on this map. So we've got the different colors. Those are indicating different named tectonic plates. There's about 10 major plates. And then how are ocean and continent indicated? The ocean is sort of the, the more pure color. The continent is indicated in the key by gray. And hopefully you see the continents as darker shaded areas, sort of looking like they're underneath that main color of the tectonic plate. Take a look at these different tectonic plates that are outlined by their boundaries, those are the black lines, and try to answer this question. Are tectonic plates made of oceanic crust, continental crust, or both oceanic crust and continental crust? It turns out the best answer is kind of a complicated one. All of the tectonic plates that we have on Earth today have oceanic crust. However, some of them also contain continents, and so we would say they have continental crust. So tectonic plates are made of oceanic crust. Some of them are made of both. There is not an example on Earth today, and it's probably possible, or it's probably likely through most of Earth history, there aren't generally tectonic plates that are just continental crust. It's possible, but the way plates move away from each other makes it extremely unlikely that this would exist for a long period of time. So we want to make sure that you are thinking about plates and plate boundaries in three dimensions. The two major types of diagrams that geologists use to indicate the surface of Earth are cross sections in which we're looking at the image from the side as if we could cut a slice into Earth and see what it looked like, like cutting a slice into a layer cake. And then also map views, looking down from above. So we're gonna practice helping you make this connection between what phenomenon locations, landforms look like from cross section and also from map view. So let's try to get oriented here. In the both the map and the cross section view, the continental crust is indicated by that sort of brownish tan layer. We've looked at that before in different diagrams. In this case, the oceanic crust is also at the surface. We've kind of stripped the water away in the map view and it's a gray color. So we can see that's what's at the surface of the Earth also in the cross section. And then we've got those other green layers, which hopefully you remember those are parts of the mantle, different behavioral parts of the upper mantle. So one thing to notice here is in the title, notice that the North American content is only a part of the North American plate. Again, we're trying to emphasize that there's a significant difference between a continent and a tectonic plate and Going along with our last image and last big idea, um, all plate bound or all sorry, all tectonic plates have oceanic crust, and some of them also have continental crust. So North American plate is an example of that second one where we have oceanic crust and continental crust on the tectonic plate, making it up. So let's check in and review and see where you're at. The question is, what layers shown here in this cross-section view would you say are making up the North American plate? Take a look at the different options, pause the video while you're thinking about it, and then we'll go over it. So the best answer to this question, what layers make up the North American plate, would be B, the tan and gray crust, that is the tan 
uh, continental crust, the gray oceanic crust, and then the light green layer below it, which hopefully you remember is the lithospheric mantle or the mantle part of the lithosphere. So that's the unit we're talking about. And you might notice over where it says continental margin, which we'll talk about in a minute, there is the plate, it's actually the Pacific plate, but the plate on the left-hand side is actually subducting under the North American continent. And the subduction includes both the gray oceanic crust and the lighter green lithospheric mantle. So that is the tectonic plate, next door, I should say, to the North American plate. All of our cross-section diagrams will follow this pattern of colors and layers. So we've introduced this before and reviewed it a little bit. Hopefully it's still making sense. Continental crust is in the tan color. Oceanic crust is in the medium gray. Lithospheric mantle, or the part of the lithosphere that is compositionally the mantle will be in that lighter green color. And then the asthenosphere, which you could also call the asthenospheric mantle, will be in the darker green color. So something to note here is that continental margins, that is the edges of the continents, as outlined here, both in the cross section and in the map view, are not always plate boundaries. So they don't necessarily line up. So let's take a look at how they might line up in the North American continent. So let's see if you can interpret this map so far. The question is, which continental margin a on the west coast of North America or B on the east coast of North America corresponds to a plate boundary. Pause while you're thinking about this and then we'll go over it. The best answer to the question which continental margin corresponds to a plate boundary would be continental margin a, so on the west coast of North America. So the very edge of the continent as seen as basically the boundary between the tan colored continental crust of the North American plate and then the oceanic crust right next door, that lines up really nicely with the black line that's the plate boundary. So we would say that that continental edge or margin on the west coast of North America, at least where the line is pointing to, corresponds to a plate boundary. Where the edge of a continent is the same thing as a plate boundary, this is generally termed an active continental margin or an active edge of the continent. And what this means is usually there is different kinds of landforms and things called tectonic activities. This basically means earthquakes, volcanoes, and mountain building. These are associated with where a continental edge um, is the same thing as a plate boundary. They're called tectonic activities or sets of tectonic activity and so we call it an active margin. The opposite of an active margin is a passive continental margin. So if you think about active as someone who's always in motion or is really um, forthcoming, I'm not coming up with the right word here, but someone who's always really willing to volunteer their answers, for instance. Incidentally, this is usually not me. I tend to be a little more passive. I'll kind of wait and see how things go. I'm not immediately the first one to raise my hand in a group. So I don't know if that human analogy helps you um, kind of make sense of these terms, but the passive continental margin then is not associated with tectonic activity. So in fact, we don't have mountain building currently or volcanoes or many earthquakes on the east coast of the United States. And that is because that part of the world is not associated with the plate boundary.